23 minutes before the hour now. Here's the asteroid story. An asteroid the size of the Rose Bowl, more than 1,000 feet across, feels its way toward the Earth right now. It'll come by first in 2029, and we'll see it up there. It'll be closer than our satellites, a thing the size of the road bo Rose Bowl hurtling through the air. And then it comes again in 2036, and that's when it may get interesting. The debate over just how close it'll get is sparking some serious debate between Russian scientists and American scientists. Here's a satellite picture of the thing. This is from, well, with this, this and, you know, this tells you nothing. But see it there? I don't know, that circly thing in the middle, maybe? Uh, this was from 2004. It doesn't look very intimidating here. Both sides seem to agree that in three decades, the asteroid will fly very close to Earth. But Russian scientists warn that our planet's gravity could change the asteroid's path and set it on a collision course. NASA scientists say there is a minuscule, little bitty chance of that happening. One in 250,000. Better than one in the, the lotto, and somebody will. What, joining us now, Michio Kaku. He's a theoretical, theoretical physics, physics professor at City University of New York, CUNY. He's also the author of Physics of the Future, and a new book coming out in about a month, and we'll tell you about that in about a month. So, tw good to see you. Mm -hmm. 2029, it flies by underneath the satellites. That's right. Mark it on your calendar. Friday the 13th, oh my April God. 2036. The well, that's big the one. second pass. On the second pass, right. The first pass, like you said, it comes right underneath our satellites. To the odds of a collision. This danger is called the Kessler Syndrome, and it was highlighted in the film Gravity. When objects traveling at 17,000 miles per hour collide, bad things happen, mainly a cascading effect of more and more collisions, creating more and more space debris. Obviously this is a threat to the crew of the International Space Station, but if it starts to take out too many satellites, it could also significantly threaten our way of life down here on Earth. And if it gets really out of control, it could eventually make space launches completely impossible. And on the second pass, it might actually be a nation buster. It'll take out Germany. It'll take out France, England. If not England, not England. <laughs> or the, the entire northeast of the United States. Careful. It'll hit with a force of 100,000 Hiroshima bombs. Really? If It'll, it hits? If it hits, right. It's a catastrophe beyond human comprehension. And the head of the Russian Space Agency has said that the Russian scientists should think of some ways of deflecting it or, or handling this deflecting menace it? in 2036. What, what, I mean, what, what are we going to do? Shoot it with a laser? Well, everyone thinks we'll send Bruce Willis out oh, there with the space shuttle. Idea. But the space shuttle can't even reach out of space. We're phasing it out, and the space shuttle only spins wheels around the planet Earth. It cannot even go to deep space. We need a new booster rocket to take us out there. Maybe China will build us one. Maybe, and then we have to nudge it out of the way. The farther it is, the easier it is to push it out with rockets so it'll, it'll miss the planet Earth. But it's something that we have to take seriously. This is the first major threat from a giant meteor or, or asteroid. Were it to hit us, do we know what it would do to our rotation around the sun and the, the spinning on the axis? Will well, it, it, will, it will definitely affect the rotation of the Earth as it goes around the sun. The immediate impact would be a gigantic shock wave going out maybe 50 to 100 miles, then firestorms going out to hundreds of miles beyond that. Firestorms. And then meteorites raining back down on the planet Earth. So the devastation would be on the order of uh, 500 to 1,000 miles. Think of a bullseye, a bullseye containing half the United United States. That's the potential impact. And again, it's a very tiny probability, but we're watching it very carefully. Because the thinking among some of these Russian scientists is that the first time it passes, the gravitational pull of the Earth could pull it closer, and then on the second pass in 2036, it the could wild hit us. card is also the atmospheric disturbances. It's going to come right, right to the outskirts of our own atmosphere. Mm. Friction is going to take place, and that's unpredictable. We simply don't know how it's going to react as it whizzes through the atmosphere of the Earth. And that could affect the second pass, and that's why we're keeping our fingers crossed yeah. in 2036. Two sets of fingers crossed. But isn't the world ending in 2012? The Mayan calendar seems to indicate... Well, if you look at the Mayan calendar, it actually says that it's cyclical, and mm. we could be witnessing a rebirth. Oh. We should be celebrating then. And personally, I'm gonna be, I, ho I hope to be around in 2013. So don't uh, sell the store, don't get divorced, <laughs> don't, don't ruin your life in, in 2012. All right, I'm sure some people will. News from the future, 2012 is going to be weird.
It's great to see you. Mm -hmm. I'll see you in a month for that new book, right? Right. Physics of the future. About the next 50 to 100 years. I, I can't wait. He interviewed. Up here, a picture of the, of the, the there's a rock up there. Mm -hmm. next. Yeah, I see that. Well, that actually came whizzing past between the moon and the earth about five years ago. Mm -hmm. It's going to come back again in 20, in 20, uh, 2029, yeah, 2029, and then it will come back and just between the earth and moon. And it will come back the next time in 2036. So the and orbit actually, is decaying. It will collide someplace between Siberia and Africa. And oh, it no. will be a huge impact. Yeah. Many, many, many megatons. Bigger yeah. than Tunguska? Don't know. How right big now. is that thing? It depends on its velocity. But it's there. We know it. We're tracking it. Oh, my and I gosh. And I said, and number six, veer its, veer its orbit. 